All right, guys, uh, this video tutorial is going to uh, get us started with um, position uh, vectors, position vectors, um, and it will also get us going with um, velocity vectors. So um, over here, we've got a coordinate system in three-dimensional space. Now, this is, this is a little different than the one I've drawn in class, but it's still a pretty good uh, representation. So, um, in this drawing, the x-axis is coming out of the uh, screen, the y-axis is running parallel to the screen, and the z-axis is running up and down. Um, so, we've gi we're given a point here. So, this point from the origin here has a position vector, okay? And that position rever, rector, vector, there it is, is given as the x coordinate and the y coordinate and the z coordinate or z coordinate. Now, say this particle moves to a new position. Say it, it can move down here if it wants. Okay? Well, this new vector. Okay, also has a position vector. So let's call this, um, this is R1, down here this is R2. So here's R1. R2 is given the same way. It's just a different X, a different Y, and a different Z. So the displacement, or the difference, the distance between these two points, is given as delta r, or you just subtract these two vectors. Well, how that works is you can subtract, let's give these ones. You can subtract like terms here, because we've got the unit vectors. So we can go x2 minus x1 a little I hat out there. And then we've got our y2 minus y1. And then we've also got our z2 minus z1. So that gives us our displacement. Well we know from last chapter that our average velocity is given as the displacement over time. Well, that becomes delta r over our change in time. So what we can do is take this equation that we got for displacement, and you're basically just multiplying it by a scalar. You're multiplying it by 1 over your delta t. So this just becomes x2 minus x1 over delta t, so i, and then we've got the same thing over here. This is our j hat, and then lastly, our z's. So, this right here is the equation for our average velocity. Okay? Now, as we did before, our instantaneous velocity is going to happen when our delta t approaches zero. In other words, the distance between these two points become closer and closer. So, if we remember, our instantaneous velocity vector is given as the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta r over delta t. Well, that is basically just the derivative of our displacement vector function with respect to time. Now, our velocity vector, our instantaneous velocity vector, is just like any vector. It can be broken up into its components. It's got kind of a vx, a vy, and a vz. Well, we can break up this right here, this definition, and give it to us as the derivative 
of the x component with respect to time of our displacement vector along with the derivative of y and the derivative of z. So our velocity vector is just the sum of its components. Well that can be dx over dt plus dy over dt plus dz over dt. I like how it's getting bigger as I'm going. Can't explain that. So this is our instantaneous velocity vector. So we need to add in our unit vector components here. So you can also find the magnitude of our instantaneous velocity by using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, vectors always have a magnitude and a direction. So, uh, generally, we'll be dealing with vectors that are going to be in the xy coordinate plane. So, we'll just call tangent inverse of alpha, and that equals your vy over your vx. So, magnitude direction. Now, um, instantaneous velocity. Later we'll get into deriving the acceleration and then also working backwards using integration. So let's say a particle um, behaves in such a way like um, this. Oops. Um, let's say it goes uh, meters minus and it's y is given as um, Okay, so these are its position equations. Well, what we can do to find its instantaneous velocity, okay, our velocity vector, we need our vx and our vy. Well, vx is the derivative dx over dt, which gives me, if you take the derivative of this function, the derivative in the uh, the x component of our derivative, or the x component of our velocity is going to be constant. Because if you take the derivative of our function up here, we end up with just negative 3 meters per second. Now over here, our y component is a little different. Our velocity in the y direction is going to be 2.0 meters per second. And then minus, take the derivative over here, bring down the 2, that gives us 8 meters per second squared times t. Now you notice whenever we take the derivative I end up with meters per second and over here I will also end up with meters per second. This is what we want because the baby class is coming up because our velocity that's the units that we have so when you're taking a derivative and you notice that your units aren't adding up you've probably made a mistake somewhere earlier. So our velocity vector would just be given as such. From here, you could find the magnitude of your instantaneous velocity at any time t by just plugging it in. You could also find the displacement by plugging in time up here to your position equations. 
So that gives you a little insight and a little practice using uh, position and deriving velocity vectors from position vectors.